Hi, teacher Tina here. Today we are talking about the big elephant in the room, bookings, and what in the world actually works to help you get bookings when you're waiting in the abyss that is post-hiring. So, full disclosure, I do not work at VIP Kids headquarters, but I have pretty good insight about the hiring process and people getting bookings because I've helped several hundred people get hired and get teaching. I live this in and out every single day, okay? So with that in mind, I'm going to be telling you today what you can be doing during this time to make the most of your time and hopefully increase your bookings as well, okay? And if you stick around to the end, you will hear my little tidbit at the end that I hope will be a little reality check for you um, that probably you need right now. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. One second. I've been planning this one for a while. Okay. So let's talk about VIP Kid. When you are a VIP Kid teacher, you are not an employee of VIP Kid. You are an independent contractor, which means that you are not guaranteed a certain amount of work, okay? I think that people tend to have a misconception about getting bookings with VIP Kid because they think it's like all of the jobs they've worked before. So most jobs, you are given a steady flow of work, that's what you expect, but with VIP Kid, you are an independent contractor. You're not guaranteed a single booking. I know that hurt, that hurt, I'm sorry, but I said I wasn't sugarcoating anything, and it's true. VIP Kid, read your contract, does not guarantee you a single booking, okay? So people come in and they're all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready and excited, and then they don't get bookings right away and they're crushed. But I'm here to tell you that, yes, you have to wait, but you should not be waiting and sitting on your hands. Okay, there are lots of things that you can be doing to actually make a difference and help you get bookings faster. So, <clears throat> let's talk about it. First of all, I would like to take you back to uh, your high school psychology class. Okay, there's this thing called a self-fulfilling prophecy. What is a self-fulfilling prophecy? Basically, it is when something comes true because... Basically, you had it made up in your mind that it was going to come true and your behaviors uh, were affected by that belief. So it did come true as an effect as a, an effect of your behavior, okay? So let me translate that to a real world example for you. Let's suppose that you are going to a banquet. You and your spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever friend um, are going to a banquet and then all of a sudden your date gets sick. You've already paid a good bit of money, you're going to go. You basically have two different perspectives, well, probably more, but two main perspectives you can take at this point. You can either think, I'm going to go and have a terrible time because I'm by myself and I don't know anybody, or you're going to go and have a good time anyway. So let's see that first person. So that first person said, I'm going to go and have a terrible time. Okay, because that person already had it made up in his mind or her mind, that person goes to the banquet and it's kind of standoffish because, well, I'm not going to meet anybody anyway. Okay, that person doesn't really introduce himself or herself. Um, kind of just is a wallflower, grumpy, avoids eye contact. So yeah, that person has a terrible time. Let's flip that around and suppose that that person went in with the mindset, I'm going to have a good time anyway, even though I'm by myself. That person goes to the banquet starts greeting people, introducing himself or herself, uh, smiling at people, asking them questions, complimenting them, really showing an interest in them, that person is probably going to go home and think, wow, I did have a really good time. Okay, same situation, but you can see how having a certain outlook uh, can affect your behavior, which affects the result. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Now, is everything in your control when it comes to bookings? Definitely not. Definitely not. Um, but there are things that you can be doing to help the outcome be successful. Okay? So let's talk about it. Basically, you should be doing a couple different things at this time. You have the time to do them. There's no excuse. You need to invest in yourself and you need to make yourself more attractive to parents. Um, 
let's talk about uh, first investing in yourself. So in my opinion, the best way to invest in yourself is to attend workshops. VIP Kid has a really, really awesome schedule of workshops. You can find it on the portal under the Academy tab. The schedule updates weekly. Uh, you should be attending these workshops. They cover anything from TPR to um, how to increase your bookings to your profile, um, how to engage students. There are a ton of topics and it's really, really valuable. Okay, so you should really be investing this time. You should never be just waiting for bookings. Because you know what I think of when I think of waiting? I think of this. You should not be waiting for bookings or you will be waiting for a long time. Okay, you need to actually take some actions to hopefully get those bookings because you've put forward the effort. Okay, you don't just sit and get bookings. I'm sorry, it just doesn't happen like that. Um, it would be extremely rare if you did nothing and got bookings. And that's why we're talking about it today. So you need to invest in yourself by attending workshops, okay? By attending workshops. That is a very, very important use of your time. And not only will it make you feel better and make you more prepared and better for your students, but VIP Kid can see that you are taking that step. You are making an actual effort. Okay, so for a second, let's put ourselves in the shoes of a person working with VIP Kid, a sales, sales team member, okay, who is assigning trial classes. Let's just suppose that you're the trial assigner person. Okay, that's not a real role, but just bear with me. Okay, and let's say that I am looking at two different teachers. I'm considering giving little Bao Bao one of these two different teachers, okay? I can see that teacher number one has attended 20 workshops. I can see that teacher number two has been here the same amount of time and has not attended a single workshop. Who do I think is better prepared to teach this trial student? Who do I think will do a better job of having the student sign up for VIP Kid? Um, yeah, the person who has put more effort forward. So I would be more inclined to give that person the class. Again, that's not how it works, but I'm just, bear with me, right? You can hear what I'm saying. You make yourself more marketable when you invest in yourself. You help yourself out, you help your student out, and you help VIP Kid out also. It's just a win-win, win-win, win-win-win. Okay, I need to take a breath, okay? Think about that for a sec. Take a sip, okay. So anyway, you need to invest in yourself by attending those workshops and you need to make yourself more attractive to parents in other ways. No, I'm not talking about flossing your teeth, although I am a big advocate of flossing. No, you need to make yourself more attractive to parents by letting them know the steps that you're taking to make yourself better and by making yourself more available to those parents. So the first part of that, um, letting parents know what you're doing you can put in your bio description that you have taken workshops on this, 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 this. You have studied this, 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 because that's what you've done in those workshops. You have actively studied those topics. Put that in your bio description, okay? Spruce up your bio description to more accurately reflect what parents want. Don't just talk about what you want, okay? Let's think about this another way. So let's suppose that you're going fishing I don't really go fishing, but hey, let's suppose that you're going fishing. When you are trying to catch that fish, do you put your favorite cookie on the end of that line, on that hook? Do you put an Oreo? Do you put a Lorna Dune? No, you don't. You put a gross, nasty worm because you know that that's what that fish wants. Okay, now parents don't want nasty worms, but they want somebody who is prepared and putting forward effort. So that's why you need to update your profile to reflect your um, ability and what you are doing. Okay, so update your, update your bio description. If your video now doesn't look as good to you because you've seen workshops and you know what is, is better, don't just let that video sit there. Update it, okay? This is your time to update those things and make yourself more attractive. You only get one chance at a first impression. One chance. If that parent is not interested in you, they're going to scroll right by you. That's just the way it is. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, you need to invest in yourself to market yourself better to the parents, and you need to make yourself more available to the parents as well. 
So people talk all the time about when you should open slots, what you should do with the 24-hour box. In my experience and my experience with my teachers, um, you need to cast a wide net. So let's suppose that a student's parents only want a 7.30 slot. That that's the only time slot they're interested in. But you are the teacher and you really want that student, but that student's only looking at 7.30 and your schedule does not have a 7.30 slot available. That student won't even consider you, even though you might be a great fit. Now, I'm not suggesting that you open every single slot 24-7, quit your day job. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying open more slots than you were probably planning to open. Don't just open your ideal slots, okay? When I was brand new to VIP Kid, bookings were a little slow. They were. And basically what I did was I opened up slots at times that were undesirable to me. So for me, I currently only teach VIP Kid in the morning, but when I was brand new, I opened up evening slots because I knew that, for example, evening weekends were popular. So I opened up those slots and what do you know? I got booked. Ta-da! Okay, so it doesn't mean that you need to keep that crazy schedule or keep working undesirable time slots forever just until you get some bookings um, under, your, under you and you get some reviews in there because once you get reviews in there, that's when things really take off. Until you have reviews, you are uncharted, uncharted territory right? Parents, it's just like when you're on Amazon. You're probably not going to buy something that has zero reviews. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. I told you I was dishing it to you straight today. Um, so yeah, you need to make yourself more available, okay, so that you are more likely to get a booking. It doesn't mean that, oh my gosh, overnight you're going to get 30 bookings, but you need to increase your chances of getting something, getting something, okay? And you should always be using the 24-hour box if you're able. I say if you're able because sometimes people will get booked overnight with the 24-hour box and they miss it in the morning and they miss their first class and they're devastated, okay? I suggest if you're using the 24-hour box and you're really nervous about missing an early morning class that you uncheck that box before you go to bed. Uncheck that set of boxes before you go to bed. At least have the 24-hour function working for you most of the day, okay? Um, because let's think about it from the salesperson perspective, okay? We're, we'll go back to that salesperson. Let's suppose that a parent calls, right, and they want their bow bow getting a class. Um, they want to start trying out VIP Kid, okay? Uh, most salespeople want to seal the deal right away, okay? So they're not going to try to book with somebody who has a slot available tomorrow, the next day. They're probably going to look for a teacher who's available today, right? So that's part of why you're more likely to get trial classes short notice. Um, because that's kind of how it works. They're trying to sell VIP kit as soon as possible. So you really increase your chances by doing the 24-hour box and by keeping as many slots open as possible. Okay. Whew. All right. One more, one more little sip. Okay. Um, I'm getting a little heated in here. So... I would like to remind you something, okay? We talked about self-fulfilling prophecies. So I basically see this happen a lot. Um, people come in, they're excited, they don't get bookings immediately, and some people become really aggressive about it in a good way, in that they are like, let me do everything possible because I will be successful. And then what do you know? They are successful because they've attended the workshops, they've improved their profile, they've, they've done all of the necessary steps, made themselves available to the parents, and then they're successful. Okay, whereas there are some people who don't get bookings right away and they say, I've read Facebook, I'm never going to get a booking. It's not going to happen. To which I say, get off Facebook because misery loves company and it's toxic to read about other people's experiences. You're only seeing the really extreme circumstances on there. Um, so get off Facebook and start acting. Okay, if you if you already have decided that you're not getting bookings, oh my gosh, I'm just I'm just not going to get bookings. That is dangerous. That's a dangerous mentality because then you stop opening so many slots and you settle for pictures that you know aren't aren't as good as good as they could be. 
and you stop attending workshops because, well, they didn't seem to be working. No, you need to work. You don't wait for bookings. You work for bookings. Okay. And I'm just going to leave you with one thought. Everybody's journey is different. Everybody's journey is different, okay? So you have probably seen videos or posts somewhere about people who got, you know, triple digit bookings their first week. That is so rare and everybody's experience is different. Most people wait, most people do have to really work for their bookings. So just keep that in mind. Don't compare yourself. That is a toxic cycle to get into. Just do the best that you possibly can do, okay? <clears throat> get off my soapbox now. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know. Uh, give me a like, subscribe, hit the little ding bell to get updated videos from me. And please comment below uh, anything you'd like to share. I would love to hear from you, new topic ideas for videos, uh, anything. If you found this useful, please let me know. And I wish you all the best in your bookings. Good luck. Bye.